Hello, hello, welcome to my Wind Blade Dancer Guide. Now in the first half of this video, I'll be explaining my personal rotation and what I personally do. And in the second half, I'll be explaining some variants you can do and some things you can change around yourself. And also some tips and tricks. And let's get started. So first of all, a Wind Blade Dancer is based on a 12 seconds rotation, unlike the Lightning Blade Dancer. My personal rotation is XZ into 15 Rolling Typhoons, X, 5 more Rolling Typhoons, CV, Femur rolling typhoons, and it will look like this. And X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, CV, 1, 2, 3. And that's it. That was two rotations. So, at the start of a fight, you want to proc your soul badge for a tiny bit more burst, and you do that by using CV at the start. You don't want to hit anything with it because you don't want to proc your soul. And while you're doing that, you might as well use the talisman too. So what you want to do at the start is CV talisman into your normal rotation. And that's it. So that's my personal rotation and what I do at the start of a fight. So, what about some variants and what can you do differently? You can break this rotation into two halves. The first half is XZ into 15 Rolling Typhoons. Now that is pretty much set in stone. You never want to change it. You don't have a reason to change it either. So the second half is a combination of XZ and V and 8 Rolling Typhoons. That is the ideal counts. So what I did was X, 5 Rolling Typhoons, CV, and 3 more. That adds up to 8. Or you can do X into 4 Rolling Typhoons, CV into 4 more. You can also do X, CV into 8. That also works. What you don't want to do is X into 6 and CV into 2. Because if you do that, your X will not come off cooldown before your Z does. So to demonstrate some of those... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or you can do XCV. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, pretty much all of those work. So you can come up with your own as long as it works. It's fine. If it doesn't work, then you can move it around or just do what I do. And now, some tips and tricks. Iframes. You have a natural iframe on your Z as a part of your rotation. So when you have Z up, you don't really have to worry about iframing. Uh, your second iframe would be your Maelstrom. There are Tab and F. Now this iframe is really handy. First of all, I recommend macroing your F so you spam it instead of holding F. That will usually get you better counts. And if you have a macro, you don't you have you don't even have to let go of your macro if you want a maelstrom. All you have to do is press tab. Did you catch that? There you go, quick maelstroms. So when do you actually want to use maelstroms and when do you not want to use maelstroms? That is really easy to figure out. If you use maelstrom and look at your skill bar, you can look at what skills goes on a global cooldown. If I use maelstrom, my C will go on a global cooldown, which means if I need to use C soon, I do not want a maelstrom. And that means I want to use maelstrom when I don't have to use C soon. What you can do is use Maelstrom before you use your second X, because the first half, you're already in an iframe from your Z. So after XZ, if I see an attack coming and I know I have to iframe, I can Maelstrom into my second combo.
Now another thing I can do. If I see an attack coming, but it's not going to be for a while, I can use XCV first, and then Maelstrom. And that's your two most reliable iframes, your two bubbles. Now in case you didn't know, if you take this talent, your Maelstrom will also give you 20% AP on resist, which is pretty nice. Oh, by the way, these are the talents I take. You want to take this because generally your crit is not high enough. If you have insanely high crit, then you can take the first one. But generally, the second one is probably a little bit better. It's really up to you. You can try it out and see which one's better for you. So, uh, what if you already use Z and Maelstrom and now you have the iframe again? <laughs> My go-to would be Backdash. After you use Backdash, you'll two, your two will change into Gale Slash. Which means you can backdash and two. Now your backdash iframe lasts for quite a while, so backdash two is a really useful iframe too. Your Q and E is a little bit shorter and a little bit harder to time, and it might be kind of unresponsive if you're using rolling typhoons. Just like that. Now Q E still works, of course. So if you need even more iframes, you still have Q and E. Now. What if you screw up your rotation and now you have to fix it? Um, a really common way to screw up your rotation is if you use C and now you have to resist something and you spin. Now you can't use Hurricane Slash. Now obviously you don't want to ever be in that situation, so you should learn the fight and figure out when you want to iframe so you don't get yourself into that situation. But if you do, <sighs> this will take you into draw stance but you shouldn't ever use it. Now, you can use Gigasword into V, and that will, that will get your Z off cooldown. If you screw this up, your Z is on a pretty long cooldown, and now your whole rotation is screwed. And one more thing. There is currently a bug in game where if you use your second X before your Z ends, you cannot Rolling Typhoon. What I mean by that is, if you look at the green bar, so if I use X now, see how my Rolling Typhoon goes away? That is a bug. You don't want to get yourself into that situation, which means you want to delay your second X just a tiny bit, just so uh, you don't overlap the wind charge you get from X with your Z. Let me see if we can do it again. Yep, Rolling Typhoon goes away. Now, it is generally pretty hard to get yourself into that situation, but it's definitely possible, and it definitely happens. One way to fix it is by using C and V. And now you can roll in Typhoon again. And that is pretty much it. Now, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And I hope you learned something from this video. And have a nice day.